Happy Tuesday, everyone. This is Karen Dubin uh, from Sweet Institute. I am going to be continuing on with where we were reading uh, yesterday uh, with Carl Rogers on Becoming a Person. Um, and we are going to continue on from page 15, the bottom of page 15, where it says some significant learnings. And we're going to read through to the uh, end of the second learning. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we go. Some significant learnings. There, in very brief outline, are some of the externals of my professional life, but I would like to take you inside to tell you some of the things I have learned from the thousands of hours I have spent working intimately with individuals in personal distress. I would like to make it very plain that these are learnings which have significance for me. I do not know whether they would hold true for you. I have no desire to present them as a guide for anyone else. Yet I have found that when another person has been willing to tell me something of his inner directions, this has been of value to me, if only in sharpening my realization that my directions are different. So it is in that spirit that I offer the learnings which follow. In each case, I believe they became a part of my actions and inner convictions long before I realized them consciously. They are certainly scattered learnings and incomplete. I can only say that they are and have been very important to me. I continually learn and relearn them. I frequently fail to act in terms of them, but later I wish I had. Frequently I fail to see a new situation as one in which some of these learnings might apply. They are not fixed. They keep changing. Some seem to be acquiring a stronger emphasis. Others are perhaps less important to me than at one time but they are all, to me, significant. I will introduce each learning with a phrase or sentence which gives something of its personal meaning. Then I will elaborate on it a bit. There is not much organization to what follows except that the first learnings have to do mostly with relationships to others. There follow some that fall in the realm of, per there follow some that fall in the realm of personal values and convictions. I might start off these several statements of significant learnings with a negative item. In my relationship with persons, I have found that it does not help in the long run to act as though I were something that I am not. It does not help to act calm and pleasant when actually I am angry and critical. It does not help to act as though I know the answers when I do not. It does not help to act as though I were a loving person if actually, at the moment, I am hostile. It does not help for me to act as though I were full of assurance if actually I am frightened and unsure. Even on a very simple level, I have found that this statement seems to hold. It does not help for me to act as though I were well when I feel ill. What I am saying here put in another way is that I have not found it to be helpful or effective in my relationships with other people to try and maintain a facade, to act in one way on the surface when I am experiencing something quite different underneath. It does not, I believe, make me helpful in my attempts to build up constructive relationships with other individuals. I would want to make it clear that while I feel I have learned this to be true, I have by no means adequately profited from it. In fact, it seems to me that most of the mistakes I make in personal relationships, most of the times in which I fail to be of help to other individuals, can be accounted for in terms of the fact that I have, for some defensive reason, behaved in one way at the surface level, while in reality my feelings run in, contrary, in a contrary direction. The second learning might be stated as follows. I find I am more effective when I can listen, ex uh, excuse me, I find I am more effective when I can listen acceptantly to myself and can be myself. I feel that over the years, <clears throat> I have learned to become more adequate in listening to myself so that I know somewhat more adequately than I used to what I am feeling at any given moment to be able to realize I am angry or that I do feel rejecting toward this person, or that I feel I am very full of warmth and affection for this individual. 
or that I am bored and uninterested in what's going on, or that I am eager to understand this individual, or that I am anxious and fearful in my relationship to this person. All of these diverse attitudes are feelings which I think I can listen to in myself. One way of putting this is that I feel I have become more adequate in letting myself be what I am. It becomes easier for me to accept myself as a decidedly imperfect person who by no means functions at all times in a way in which I would like to function. This must seem to some like a very strange direction in which to move. It seems to me to have value because the curious paradox is that when I accept myself as I am, then I can change. I believe I have learned this from my clients as well as within my own experience that we cannot change, we cannot move away from what we are until we thoroughly accept what we are. Then change seems to come about most, almost unnoticed. Another result which seems to grow out of being myself is that relationships then become real. Real relationships have an exciting way of being vital and meaningful. If I can accept the fact that I am annoyed at or bored by this client or this student, then I am also much more likely to be able to accept his feelings in response. I can al also accept the change experience and the changed feelings <clears throat> which are likely to occur in me and in him. Real relationships tend to change rather than to remain static. So I find it effective to let myself be what I am in my attitudes, to know when I have reached my limit of endurance or tolerance, and to accept that as fact, to know when I desire to mold or manipulate people, and to accept that as a fact in myself, I would like to be as acceptant of these feelings as of feelings of warmth, interest, permissiveness, kindness, understanding, which are also a very real part of me. It is when I do accept all these attitudes as a fact, as a part of me, that my relationship with the other person then becomes what it is, and I am able to grow and change most readily. So end of reading today, and uh, deeply profound. Um, and tomorrow we'll be continuing on with the third of, um, of the significant, uh, of the significant, <coughs> learnings. So have a wonderful rest of your days and we look forward to being with you tomorrow.